Hello, everybody. Um, uh, thank you for, be with, for being with us. Uh, and uh, uh, I will start by um, introducing a little bit the topic of uh, today's uh, conversation and the guests uh, for that, that uh, uh, accepted our invitation. So um, Vanina and me uh, uh, admire since a long time uh, uh, the work of uh, of a very special school um, from uh, from France. Um, the name of this uh, of this very special I don't know. Let's call it a school. Um, uh, it's Le Frenois Studio National des Arts Contemporaines. Why am I seeing myself so big? Do you know? Oh yes. Uh, and uh, uh, Francois Bonenfant, uh, who is there? I see. I think already for ten years. I guess uh, if I remember correctly. No the um, coordinating the, the the film and the visual art department no francois yeah. correct so 10 years already so we we knew each other for a long time so we we were thinking of uh, revisiting the some of the films from uh, le frenois and also um, um, having a, a chance to 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 discuss uh, the work of the school with francois and we uh, invited him to 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 make a selection of films, uh, um, and he picked four films uh, made by, by former students of uh, of Le Frenois. Three of the films uh, were made uh, <coughs> during the studies in Le Frenois by uh, Daphne Heretakis, uh, by Isabel Pagliai, and by uh, Francesco Rodriguez. And uh, George Jacom. Um, with Flores, this is a film I think that you made after you you finished the studies in uh, in Le Frenois, and it's the only film uh, uh, in the program that uh, that was made outside of Le Frenois. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, Francois, for uh, uh, for the programmation. It was a uh, I don't know. It was very it was a, it was very good to watch these films uh, that are very diverse. Uh, uh, and very, I don't know how to say it, um, uh, temerary. Does this word exist in English? No. <laughs> it's like it's, it, they are made by, by, by uh, artists uh, who are not afraid to, um, I don't know how to say, to, to try things, which is something that I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that mm, uh, I think uh, in general schools should, it's very important for them to do this for their students to help them try things and uh, uh, but at the same time there are some let's say similarities like you can feel a direction of the school in general not only in these four films um, and i'm saying it from the point of view of someone who was a student for a long time in bucharest in the film uh, uh, faculty of uh, UNATC, uh, and now I'm um, I'm teaching there, and uh, very rarely um, uh, this kind of uh, I don't know of films that play so much with the narrative, uh, uh, especially with the narrative uh, with narratives uh, are are made there uh, in in my school. I think my school, the school where I am from, has other let's say. Um, um, favorite, I don't know, directions that, that seem to come out of the film. So from this perspective, I can sense a, a very clear direction of, of, of the films in general, let's say, uh, and also in these four films. And I also want to, to say hello to the four filmmakers who are with us, to Daphne Heretakis, I think you are in Athens now, no? In, uh, in Greece, hello. To yeah. Isabel Pagliai, uh, I think it's, from France, no, uh, you are now in France somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Georges Jacom, who is in Portugal, in Lisbon. Yes. And Francisco Rodriguez, who is in Spain, in uh, Madrid. Uh, uh, hello, thank you for being here. And also, I want to say hello to Dorunicescu, who is um, head of the directing, uh, film directing department of uh, the Film University in Bucharest. Hello, Doru and to uh, Lucia Kikos, who is a young filmmaker and uh, she's a master degree student, uh, directing department in Bucharest. Tudor Jurgiu is uh, 
uh, filmmaker and uh, uh, teaching, uh, directing uh, in film university, in the film university in Bucharest, and uh, Flavia Dima, who is a, a critic, a film critic, and she also is a former student, uh, Flavia, of a directing department. I don't remember. You, you studied directing, no? Uh, documentary film directing. Film directing, perfect. perfect. It didn't so, work out. <laughs> yes. So thank you all for being here and to all, all the others. Uh, we also have uh, uh, other, there are also other filmmakers together with us. Uh, hello, Adina. Hello, Christina. Uh, Ciprian, hello, hello to, to all of you. And thank you for being here. So I would propose that we uh, start the discussion from uh, from the university, from, from not from the from from Le Frenois, to discuss a little bit the specifics of uh, of Le Frenois. Um, uh, first of all, um, I I know that Le Frenois is uh, is dedicated to you know it's not for it's for people who already have some experience in uh, uh, the art fields or uh, already studied cinema. So I imagine that people who who, who come they are not like immediately after they finish high school they all they already have some life experience and this is all already something different than Bucharest for example mm -hmm. but also you have a very spe specific I think way of uh, conducting of coordinating the projects uh, then for example in Bucharest uh, and in many other places if you could develop a little bit on that Francois it would be nice for the beginning yes of course but I wanted to <clears throat> To come back to something you said before regarding the kind of films films we are making in the Frenois. And I think the way we are making film here in that school are quite different also because it's not a, a cinema school. It's not like a traditional cinema school. It's an art school. So it means that the, the cinema is uh, like the the core of the of Le Frenois. It's like a culture of reference for everyone, but it's not uh, only devoted to, to cinema. So the idea is to, is to uh, for the students, for the young artists, to 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 develop things in the in the field of cinema, but in a very free way, you, you, know, you know. And um, and for example, when you are thinking about a traditional school, maybe nowadays it's changing, but uh, the, the the script is very important. Of course, it's important also in the Frenois, but it's not uh, the 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 essence of the film. You know, you you have to to develop something. It could be. Uh, the point of departure could be a poem or something, and uh, it's quite free. We have to, to have information about the way you are going to, to make your film and everything, but uh, uh, it's very free. And also, I think, the, I think the, the color, if I can say that, of the film um, is specific also because uh, it's, a, it's an international school in a way. Uh, the, the students coming in the Frenoir, coming from everywhere, I, as we can see. <laughs> Uh, today with uh, our four filmmakers and it's also an important uh, things to know um, yes and uh, also so Le Frenois is a place uh, it's a school of course but it's a place of production and the idea to produce something like uh, let's say in the real life so a uh, scale one and um, and uh, for that there, 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 there is no real courses you know uh, it's it's more like uh, each year we have uh, six uh, artists, well known, uh, who come to Le Frenoir and uh, it's like uh, they have discussion with the, the students and uh, about the project they want to, to realize uh, in the first year, in the second year. And um, also when these students uh, are just candidates, um, they, they have to, 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 to come to Le Frenoir and to propose some things to do. And so the idea is to help them to uh, but uh, not only in a technical way, of course, even if it's important, but also in a, uh, you know, to in an artistic way. And uh, so, for example, we, we had a, a professor, artist from uh, everywhere. We, we had uh, Jean Pedro Rodriguez, Bellatar, uh, Matthias Pinheiro, who's an Argentinian filmmaker, Claire Denis, Ben, uh, ben Rivers, Alain Guirodi, enfin, a lot of people, and also a visual artist like Manon de Bourg or this year Valérie Jouve, uh, she's a photographer. And I, I think uh, all this mixture and the, the way uh, we are dealing um, with, the, with the, the production, the elaboration of the project uh, gives a, a special uh, 
coloration to, to the film and something very specific and it has to see with the experiment. You know, the idea is to experiment quelque chose. It's not to, to reproduce uh, this, um, an idea of uh, the cinema, uh, what the cinema should be, you know? It's, uh, it's like to, to, to go uh, across that. So each of the each of the students or each of the each of them when they come in the university they already have a project that they are thinking of no they apply with the project this is Absolutely. what I understand no and they have a and then you and then you you create the let's say the the context uh, for the development of that that project no of together course. with okay and um, the tutors or the you call them artistic uh, coordinators no. Artist professor invite invited pro artist professor. Yes. So, um, uh, how you you invite each year one different uh, filmmaker, no, or no, or more than one? Uh, more than one. Enfin, it, it depends. It's it's a mixture between visual artists and also I have to say that uh, I'm in charge of the first year of the Frenois, and uh, this uh -huh. year is dedicated to uh, cinema, photography, video, and uh, there is a second year. Uh, Eric Prigent is in charge of this uh, this year. And the second year has a um, techn technological tropism. And uh, uh -huh. also the, um, the artist, the professor coming from for that year uh, are coming from uh, other area of art. Uh -huh. Because I noticed that the one of the principles of the school is that they also develop the project, no? Uh, at the same time with the, the, the students are developing a project. It's correct? So, sorry, uh, the tutors, the coordinators, they are also developing a, their own project during this uh, period, no? Together with the students. It's a, it's a very important point. Uh, the idea is that uh, when we are inviting uh, some, someone to teach in a Frenois, um, this artist or this filmmaker has to produce also something during the, the year. And uh, so it could be something very, uh, very small, very modest, but in a, in a very good way. Um, with, uh, with the budget of production that we can allow, uh, which is not uh, crazy, of course. We are a public school. But um, it was the case, for example, for Miguel Gomez, the Portuguese filmmaker, who made a film uh, in Le Frenois when he was an uh, invited artist there, and uh, a short film. And uh, also it was the case for Claire Denis, for example. But um, many of the times also we are doing co-production. Uh, we did it with jean Pedro Rodriguez, for example. And uh, his last film, uh, The Ornithologist, uh, was made in co-production uh, with us. And it was a per perfect timing because he was doing the post-production of his film mm. in the Frenois, and in the same time he was teaching uh, in the Frenois too. Okay, so I would like to ask you, the, the former students of Le Frenois, a little bit about, because this is something that sounds, you know, uh, it's something that also we think a lot in Bucharest, no, Doru, about inviting uh, guest uh, uh, filmmakers to tutor some projects, no? Uh, so uh, I am really curious we how... Bit, we, are a bit, uh, we are a bit limited in inviting uh, external people, but uh, this is something we try to solve for, for the next year, at least. Mm -hmm. But I'm really curious because I will tell you something from... Uh, uh, I've met a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I've met some famous filmmakers and not all of them seem very generous. Uh, uh, so I am really um, curious how the relation between them and you as, uh, as I don't know, as they are, I don't know, I don't know what to say, like uh, the, the, the students that they were coordinating, how it went, how it helped you this. Uh, I was actually a little bit influenced when I rewatched your films because on the final credits, uh, uh, there is the name of the coordinator written. And I, I started to find some similarities between uh, uh, their works and yours. Of course, it's a little bit stupid to do this, but I, I, I'm really curious how, how it worked. For example, uh, Isabel, your coordinator for Isabella Mora was Vincent Diotro? Uh... It, 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 it was not uh, her coordinator. I am the coordinator. It was uh, her teacher. Sorry, the teacher. Yes. I think you, you have to open the mic, uh, Isabel. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, it's okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, yes, it was Vincent, Vincent Dutre. 
um, but um, what what do you mean uh, about uh... oh i am curious what what is how, what are how are you developing the project together what is the involvement of the you know it's um, and and sorry my english is not perfect so so I, I try to, to, to speak uh, quite well <laughs> in English. But uh, no, with Vincent Dutre, it's, um, the fact it's very interesting because uh, um, all the artists uh, have a, um, a wet work. And uh, for Vincent Dutre, uh, in fact, he, he, he arrived very late in my project. In fact, uh, I was editing when he, when he um, when you see my work, uh, and um, before that, we're just talking about uh, what I want to do, but uh, it was not. Uh, uh, pas, pardon, je parle en français. <laughs> C'était pas très suivi sur une partie du travail, et puis à un moment donné, uh, pour, le, pour le montage, c'est là qu'il avait envie d'intervenir, de regarder, de donner son avis. He was not. He was not um, working a lot with her. Uh, at the beginning, but during the editing, he 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 started to work. Okay, okay. I'm not a translator. Huh? <laughs> okay, and uh, Daphne, you I know your it was Ben Rivers. Um, yes, it, it was Ben Rivers, who's a let's say a fundamental filmmaker for those who don't know him. Uh, so it, for me, it was great because uh, he had a very free way of working uh, in his own practice. So he really uh, encouraged me to, to keep it this way, let's say, because my project was quite free and open. And that's the way I work. So someone else who would have been maybe very strict about some things uh, could have been very hard for me. Uh, and of course, with Ben, we developed other things. And to me, the the best thing was to exchange about uh, his practice, uh, like how he works. Uh, so I could also maybe uh, not necessarily follow the way he works, but just know that each one of us can work a different way. And I think that's the nice thing about the Prenois, even if it's a very bureaucratic uh, school because it's in France, uh, they do adapt a lot to uh, our projects and the way we want to, to do them. So mm -hmm. for me, it was a great, uh, great, great experience. Okay. And, uh... Je vais quelque chose parce que du coup, c'est très ambigu. <laughs> If I can, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, we, we hear you. We hear okay. you. Okay, okay. No, because in fact, it was great, it was great um, to, to work with him. But um, the, the fact is, uh, uh, it, it depends, in fact, the person who are in front of you. And uh, for him, it was better to, to, to come uh, in this part of, the, of my work uh, because uh, he loves uh, editing and uh, all his movies about how to construct a uh, different uh, way to, um, uh, to understand things and uh, between uh, uh, documentary and fiction. And, and he writes all the time um, uh, uh, voiceover. So, he loves that. He loves play with uh, with the material, and uh, it's it's not a, uh, it's not an artist who you know who who, who shoot uh, uh, people who are very interesting about uh, shooting in documentary way like me. Uh, he he can shoot everything, Vincent Dutre, and he's in very good uh, in, um, in this part. And so for him, the the he has a play. It's after, uh, it's after shooting. So uh, it was a yeah. nice thing to, to yes, to, to work with him. But uh, after, when I come come back with my rushes and during the editing, in fact. And uh, actually, uh, uh, if in your film, I think uh, we will come back later to to discuss it more. But it's very important. The it seems to be very important. The sound. Uh, the way you constructed the, the relation between the sound and the, uh, the shots and the order of shots. So uh, I don't know if it was also his help or the discussions you had, but it's it's a kind it's a kind of film where this seem very this phase of the of the construction seems very important. Uh, I don't know if it was, but yeah. Yes, yes, um, in, for yes. 
for me it's um, it's um, the the hors champ yes uh, out of frame out what of you frame, don't yes. see yes it's uh, it's um, it's something who interests me a lot and uh, all the time i uh, i thinking okay i i want to shoot something but if i can shoot this thing how to um, to to show it uh, differently and uh, i love the tension between uh, um, shoot of uh, the images and sound and uh, and yes maybe it's uh, it's like a, a third voice uh, who appears when you are very interesting about mm. uh, yes um, um, sorry <laughs> um, try in french say it in french peut-être je peux essayer en français je vais essayer d'aller doucement mais en tout cas voilà ce que ce que je veux dire par là c'est que ce qui m'intéresse vraiment c'est que dans le dans le hors champ ce qu'on ne peut pas réussir à filmer pour mille et une raisons que ce soit des raisons éthiques politiques ou parce que euh, on recherche une qualité esthétique. Uh, stop, stop. What I, what, what yeah, I, uh, yeah. Uh, what I like uh, with the or, uh, when, uh, to, what I like using the orchant, the out of frame. When I use the R, but j'ai oublié. No, for for a thousand of reason, ethic or polit or politics, uh, thing that I can't uh, uh, film. Yes. Ouais. Euh, bah, du coup, le, le, le fait de pouvoir euh, interroger le son et tout ce que le son peut nous apporter en plus de l'image et la tension euh, que ça peut produire euh, et donc qui peut être en décalage aussi. Enfin, voilà, je trouve que c'est une manière aussi d'envisager euh, les choses. Euh. I like to use the sound, uh, 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 the décalage, je ne sais pas comment on dit. I mean, the tension in between the image and the sound uh, is something that I really love to explore. Okay, yeah. uh, maybe I will, I will try to to make uh, um, in English. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Francisco, you you worked with Belatar, no? Um, with the yeah. Hungarian filmmaker Belatar, and what? Yeah, yeah. How was? I mean, please describe a little bit the process of working with him. In what way you he interfered? I don't know. He. <coughs> Mm, was not that 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 rich because he was no he was just arriving to school and I think not totally understanding how was working the system. Uh huh. But I think that, um, more, uh, more important than him as figure as uh huh uh, um, was really help helpful having. A lot of people uh, who surround you, like all the structure of the of this place. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know. I remember especially like uh, Blandine, who is the person who works in the sound um, uh, part and some department. Mm -hmm. And also, we we have one artist who goes with us. Like in that, in my case, was Belatar. But there are also a couple of persons who are always giving advices to all the students, like all the years. Mm -hmm. Not only one artist, for me, at least for me, was not just one artist uh, guiding a process. It's more um, a lot of people really um, putting the best of them mm -hmm. to try to push the films or the artworks where you want to the place where you want to move it. Okay. Technically, um, yeah, also an artistic uh, way. Okay, and George, uh, you are, so it was also Vincent Diot, no? Your, uh... Yes, my, the film that I'm showing here, it was not made with him because it was made after Frenois. But my first year was with uh, Vincent Diotre. But I, I would like to say, and it's a little bit in the same uh, type of talk that Francisco was having, because this idea of tutors, it's, it, it can be a little bit uh, romantic mm -hmm. because sometimes good artists are not good tutors. And 
For example, now I'm, I'm starting to give um, cinema classes to, to, to my students and I understand a little bit better the type of feedback that I used to have while I, while I was in, in school. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that in Frenois, for me more important than the tutors, it was the, um, it was the students, the selection of students that the school makes. Mm -hmm. And if you see all the Frenois films, I think you, you, you have more connections between the films of the students than from the films of the students with the films of the tutors. Mm -hmm. That is leading to a question we had uh, uh, with André is, uh, and maybe it's to, for you, uh, François, but to all of them, but uh, um, how, do you, how do you choose your students? Because it's also interesting maybe for students in, in mm -hmm. Romania who would like to come to Le Frenois. Uh, I, I, we understood that they have to have a project, but more than this. They have to they have to have a little bit of practice before mm -hmm. and uh, of course but some of them are, are coming from more theoretical fields mm -hmm. uh, a lot of students are coming from art schools mm -hmm. and also from university uh, that's the majority and um, to 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 apply to Lefrenois you have to to have uh, five years of studies after the baccalaureate oh, yeah. and so <laughs> it's an important point Yes. So it's a, it's a, it's already a kind of selection, of course, and um, but we have also another way, another path. Um, there is the possibility to apply to the Frenois without that, but uh, you have to prove that you that you have a, a practice for uh, from for seven years, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's also possible. It's not uh, we didn't want it to be like an absolute uh, exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. Okay, but this is let's say these are technical details. But if you if you could uh, I don't know synthesize something that you are looking for when you select them, could you I don't know some things? I was going to that point, of course. Okay. But, um, it's difficult to say. I, I just last week we we made the pre-selection, and uh, so it's a very enthusiastic but also terrible moment, of course. Yeah. And um, how to say we 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 try to 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 create a balance or so, um, like. We, of course, the, first of all, it's the, the, the project and the, the works the, 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 the candidates um, have, have done before. Uh, that's, that's the important thing. But also, after that, we, we try to imagine how this project could develop in Le Frenoir and uh, how it, it could be, it, it could make, uh, talking about the persons, it, 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 it could make something uh, um, quite harmonious in a way, but even if there is like uh, very, it's, it, they are very different. Of course, we are not uh, searching for clones, you know. But um, um, yes, we, we we have that in mind. But, but there, there is no, uh, I don't know. There, there is no recipe. There is no uh, a list of things we 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 want to have. Uh, I think the most important thing is the 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 the, the very free relationship the the artist or the filmmaker. Um, has with uh, his medium or her medium, and um, that's an important point. And what kind of things you want to 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 to, to develop with that? And we, we try to understand the relationship between what this person did before and what this person want to 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 do uh, during the the years in the Frenois. You know, and, I don't know if I as well. Oh yeah, yeah, it's good. And about uh, there are French people, but there are people from everywhere. Uh, they have some uh, grants, or I don't know how do they is it, do they have to pay or? Yes, they, they have to pay, but it's uh, it's something. But it's not uh, for for that kind of school. It's nothing in a way. Okay. But I can be I can be very uh, concrete. It's like uh, seven hundred and sixty euros. So mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's not uh, at all uh, crazy for all the the possibilities they will have after. Yeah. A year. And uh, yes, for one year, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And uh, no, we, we don't have a system of grants, but some students, uh, um, oh, yeah, I think uh, when Francisco was in the Frenois, he has a grant. I'm not, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, uh, Francisco, but coming from, uh, from Chile. And uh, so the, there is this possibility, they, but they have to find them that by themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have another question because in all the films we have seen to, to, to I mean, 
we have seen for tonight. Um, uh, films are filmed, uh, yeah, very far away from Le Frenois. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. And so can you talk about this before we get in more precise uh, in the films themselves? Of course, but, not, but I wanted to tell, to tell something also very important. For example, uh, if there are some Romanian candidates, uh, you can apply in Le Frenois uh, in English, it's possible. Okay. Uh, for the, the, the pre-selection and the selection also. Mm -hmm. After that, of course, the language of, uh, Le, of Le Frenois is French, but uh, so you have to have like a, a little feeling with that language, like in peinture, I don't know how to say that, like to be a little bit colored. Mm -hmm. uh, by, by that language or familiar, but um, that's an important point also. So don't be afraid uh, if you your French is super clumsy or I don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, it's true. You are speaking about the fact that uh, a lot of things uh, are made very far from Le Frenois, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a, let's say it's a kind of classic in a good way. Uh, but Francisco is a very good example, coming from Chile and. Uh, so he, he built uh, in his mind uh, the, the idea of this film. And so it, it was the, the project he, he proposed to, to, to us. And uh, of course, it's really not a problem. But we have also the contrary. Uh, for example, this year, I, I cross finger, I hope he's going to, to make, uh, he's going to shoot his film. We, we have a, a Vietnamese student and uh, he always shoots in Vietnam or in Asia and uh, in Vietnam. And, um, and this time he, he, want, he wanted to experiment something here. And so it was, uh, I hope he's going to shoot, he's going to shoot uh, in the north of France. Okay. So, but this, this also means that from what I, I, it seems on the credits that you are working with, uh, with technicians and teams from that countries, no? It was not from Le Fenois, I don't know the, or it was like the, the DOP, the, uh, it, 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 you know, you understand what I mean? Like yeah. all the team, the teams, the, the teams of the films are also from Le Fenois, you, you know, from other departments or they are uh, people from... The countries. From, from the, I don't know, from, from outside of the festival that are being, uh, of the, of the <laughs> school, sorry. In, in the case of Francisco, it's a mixture. Uh, no, in, ge in general, in general, because I don't know, for example, in, uh, in the film in Bucharest, you have department of directing, department of uh, film, of image, of uh, DOP, department of editing, department of sound. So when uh, uh, students make a project, they work together. I, I think it's not uh, allowed to work with people from outside, actually. No, Doru. I think uh, they, they, you they are encouraged yeah. because we don't have uh, the technicians that are working who are working in Le Frenois. Um, they they are not work. Uh, they are not directly working on the on the project. You know, we we, we have a um, uh, Le Frenois has uh, its own list of uh, technicians of DOP of sound engineer and everything. And uh, but um, so the students can choose in that list, but also they can bring with them. The, the, the technician they want to, to work with. So it's, okay. it should, it's completely open. Okay. So it's like a more, a more open process of, uh, of selecting your team, let's say. It's, but it, yes, it's and it's, for us, I think it's part of the pedagogy also to, to choose the, 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 the right technician you want to work with. Yeah, but yeah. then if it's people from outside the school, they have to pay them. Yes, of course. Yeah, so there, there is money from Le Frenois for that. Absolutely. There is a, a budget of production. Oh, good. Uh, in cash, it's uh, 8,000 and uh, 400 euros, mm. plus uh, all the industry, uh, which is free. Mm. But of course, you have to pay the technician working with the tools. Mm. OK. So I would have a question for, uh, also, sorry. Sorry, oh, sorry Andre. It could be a co-production also. Mm. OK. But the Frenois has to, 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 to stay the main part. That's so I would like to ask some, a question for to Isabel, uh, Daphne, George, and Francisco uh, uh, regarding to their time in Le Frenois. Um, if they can say very briefly one thing that was uh, I don't know that they discovered there that was uh, uh, better than they expected, and one thing that was worse than they expected <laughs> during this experience, and why. 
It's, and I would ask the same question to Lucia, for example, from Munatece, from Bucharest, and to Tudor, and uh, uh, also as a teacher, and to Doru. So let's play a little bit. Uh, okay, um, yeah, I, I can. You, yes, you please. Can? Yes. yes, okay. Yes. Um, the trust, I think. Because me, um, in fact, uh, when I, I go to the Frenois, I, I didn't do a lot of things. I was at university making very um, uh, theory, theoretical studies, yes. And uh, I, I love making photography, but I was completely autodidact. And um, soon um, it was a great chance to, yes, to be accepted and uh, to do my project and, uh, and uh, feeling the, uh, the, the confidence of everybody around you. It's uh, something who will give you a lot of um, uh, power and, uh, and and be strong to, to making movie. So it was very important for me, uh, very decisive moment in my life and time. And uh, and uh, yes, and I am, I'm, the, the first year was the, the best year for me in French uh, because the liberty and um, of my project and uh, the worst uh, <laughs> in French um, Maybe it's a difficulty for me to um, to be very, um, you know, in the uh, how to say that. The second year was more difficult for me because uh, it was uh, based on uh, technological uh, things, and uh, it was very nice to discover that and uh, to decide to make a movie. But um, um, f f for me, it was uh, maybe uh, maybe I, I I needed more time for you know appropriate myself uh, all the condition and uh, and uh, everything. It was completely new and one year for making a project. It's very short, so may maybe it uh, yes it uh, it was uh, worse for me this, this second year. Uh, but it was very interesting too, but um, the... Isabel, can I ask you something? What, what do you mean by that it was more technological? Uh... Yes, in fact, be, uh, uh, in the framework, so you have two years, the first year, uh, you, you make the project you want. So it can be a, uh, a film, it can be a photography, etc. And uh, you, are, you are completely free. And uh, for the second year, uh, you you must um, um, uh, sorry. Uh, making uh, not really uh, not uh, not a movie but uh, some something uh, an, uh, for, you know, an installation for example uh -huh. but with the technological uh, aspects and it's very strong it's something you know in the at, in the art of the project and uh, it's a uh, a point very important, and uh, it's why the the Frenois insists a, a lot about that, and it and I think it's a very good idea because uh, the it's a big part of the message of the Frenois that uh, it's uh, very open to new uh, new technology and everything. But for me, uh, maybe uh, I need uh, one year more, of, in fact, for making this uh, this uh, uh -huh. at, uh, second year because I. I didn't know nothing about new technology, and it's very short to mm -hmm. to make research and say, "Oh my God, it's uh, this is, uh, exists, mm -hmm. this too," and I don't know how it's work and uh, uh, what project I want to do. So yes. Okay. So the worst part it was that it, it was too short. Yes. Which is which seems like a good thing to to hear for <laughs> <laughs> for Francois. Thank you, Daphne. What about you, Daphne? Sorry. For me, I guess that one of the best things uh, they said it's, uh, previously was uh, the people that were there. 
the students, but also so many uh, other, uh, let's say, teachers that you exchange with. There is a level of uh, exchange and discussion that I have not found uh, since. And uh, there is a language uh, that uh, you develop, which is a language that is quite, I don't want to make it pretentious, but it is a language that is quite uh, raffinated <laughs> and free. Like uh, Francois said, you can say, oh, I have this poem, I want to make a film. And the script is like uh, three lines, uh, maybe, mm -hmm. or maybe a bit more. And uh, this, I mean, at least for me, now that I'm outside, uh, it's never happened to me again that I'd say that to a financing thing. And they tell me, oh, yes, here you go, you, you get 8,000 euros. So for me, this, this was really great. And I think it did help uh, develop my project a lot. Uh, the worst part, I guess, is what Isabel said. Uh, I think it's quite personal because some people are um, very good with new technologies. Uh, for those of us who aren't ready, it's uh, really hard because you, you give it uh, your all the first year to make your film and suddenly very quickly you're still finishing it and you have to propose the next one and sometimes you're really exhausted uh, and I mean at least for me it was uh, very hard uh, but it's, it's my fault but uh, it was very, it was a very useful experience. So that, that's what I would say. Good. So, Francois, if, if it would be three or four years, it would be better. <laughs> the experience. Okay. okay. <laughs> George? I was, the good thing I was going to say exactly the same thing as Daphne said. I actually wrote a poem because I, presenting, a, presenting a, because it works really like that, the school, when you, when you are presenting a project, it can start as a as a poem or as a or a, or one or with one image and and you start working you start working with that and it's very free and it's very easy for you to to discover yourself i think for me because it, we we call it as a school but for the students i think there there is this feeling that is more like a residency that gives you money and in two years you can do two projects mm -hmm. and 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 that is very free to someone to work with projects because you don't the limitations that you have they are very small almost and it's more about the type of work that you want to do and and the other side i, I it's very personal this thing that i'm going to say but when I was in Frenois, I had this feeling that I put um, like, like my life, it was in pause. You know, these two years that happened that I was there, that I was very happy. There is this, there is this feeling that, that the life that I had before and the life that I have now, there is a moment that my life was in pause. And maybe it's because it's, in terms of the, of the geography of the place, because it's in a very specific place. So you have this almost apocalyptic feeling of time. And, and I know that Daphne doesn't like her second year film project, but, but the feeling of, of her film, uh, that I think it's online now, I think it's online in Prenoa. I, I think the feeling of, of her film, it's exactly the feeling that I remember from Prenoa. But what, what tell what what are you talking? What, what do you mean by apocalyptic? You mean the the city, the the or what? Uh, the way it looks, the left. Uh, what what's the name of the city where Le Frenois is? Is not Lille, no? No, it's in Tourcoing. Tourcoing, okay. And, and maybe Francois can talk in a more proper way of the city, but I I'll, I'll try to give my <laughs> my my point of view. But um, Tourcoing and Roubaix. There are it's these two cities in France that they were very, they were strong, strongly, um, they suffer a lot because they had a lot of industry and suddenly all the fabrics, they stopped to, to, to work and people started to not working there. So it's, it's, it's um, geographically, it's, it's, a, it's, quite, it's quite big and but but you have a lot of abandoned places and abandoned factories and the school is in the middle of that 
So it's this high technology school with the best conditions um, in a city that it looks, it looks that it has this feeling that I was saying that it's in pause. Um, yeah, but this is my, my perspective. And you, and you, while you are there, you don't have necessarily projects related to the city, no? You develop projects related to places far away from it, from what I've seen. You don't have necessarily a connection with the mm -hmm. city, but the city had a, has a connection with the school. For example, it has a cinema uh -huh. on the weekends and uh, projections uh, during the week that uh, the, the people of the city can go to the school. Oh, and okay, we, and you're... And I think part of the professionals in the school, actually they live in the area. Okay. So th that relation exists, mm -hmm. but yeah. But it's not necessarily programmatical. It's not yeah. like something that, uh, yeah. Okay, and Francisco, Francisco? Uh, I think it's more or less the same that um, Daphne, George, and Isabel were saying. Um, I was really <clears throat> happy feeling that people were just believing on you and they trust on you. Just uh, the people who work at Frenoa trust in your project and trust in you because they choose you somehow. So and um, for me it was unbelievable like take the equipment and go i say i need this camera which was a 60 millimeters camera which is expensive to rent it per day and really good sound systems and i say okay i needed to go to two months to patagonia <clears throat> and i promise you that i will come back with the film <laughs> and this uh, they believe you, they just believe you and they don't ask more than as George was saying or nothing like a poem or five but this, pages. But this sounds really the opposite of bureaucracy, Daphne, Daphne, no, at, no, but at, at least compared to Romania. <laughs> when you go to the second year. Oh. So you said that the school gave you the equipment to go to Pantagonia and shoot, no? Yes, how just many? based on a few lines of a poem. A little bit more than that, but I have to the... say that Francisco has a proper script. <laughs> ah, okay. So you're romanticizing your uh, film experience. Not, not really, no, but uh, it's a, it was a kind of mixture. But uh, I have to, to, to let Francisco. Okay. Yeah. I mean, compared with the industry, it's yeah. nothing. What, what I had, uh, I tried to to send it to grants or national funds and it's never gonna, we will never find the money with that, like with that five or 10 pages um, proposal. And which is amazing is that we, uh, after that process, I understood that was the way I wanted to choose to work, to be able to discover things in the shooting um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if can I work in the other system, like in the most structured, uh, traditional. But this doesn't create problems for you. I mean, you didn't finish so long ago. None of none of you. So probably it's too too early. But this bubble, for example, this it seems it seems that it was very special for all of you. The experience and uh, intense and there is something common in what you said that it, it seems to, to have been like a very different than the the way things work uh, when you when you when you search for financings afterwards or in i don't know in general uh, uh, the fact that you that you work in this very open system that did it create let's say some false expectations afterwards or it makes it harder for you to adapt or it, not at all it, it's 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 you understand my question because i'm asking because my school for example uh, and we will speak a bit a bit about it afterwards so uh, to be able to compare i think it's um, uh, like one of the things uh, one of the reasons why the students make more narrative films in general or i think it's also related to I don't know to the way the industry in general works. I don't know how to say it, 
you understand what I mean? So it's they are a little more similar in a way with what you know uh, what international audiences expect from Romanian cinema to be at some point you know realist, uh, realist, whatever. You understand what I mean? So uh, it works very well to prepare you uh, with with the expectations. Uh, I don't know general expectations from you, uh, but I know. I think from what I spoke with a lot of the students that they would love to have the, the kind of experience that you describe, that you had in Le Frenois, to be more free, to be la la. But, and I would also love it uh, to, to, to be able to, to provide this kind of uh, uh, atmosphere also, at least partly during the, the university. But afterwards, do you think it created like a, a kind of alienation for you? I don't know, lack of adaptation adapting to, I don't know, to, to, to the restrictions of, or not? Maybe it's a silly question, but I, I already asked it, so. <laughs> but André, if I can yeah. speak, the idea is, is to, to help them to realize their project. And uh, so I think the trust uh, comes from the fact that uh, during the, the application, we, we discovered also young, they are already artists or filmmakers, you know? Of course, it's it's like a bet, but uh, not a totally crazy bet, you know, and uh, not not totally insane, because we have an idea of the the, the, the possibility. These young artists, we have an idea of, of what they, they 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 are able to to what will we they will be able to do, you know, and so uh, and also even because we we talk about, a lot of about the fact that. Um, uh, it could be a very specific uh, way to, to, to build a project and everything, but uh, uh, we are really follow, follow them and help them with the technical uh, aspect. And it's a very important point, you know, because we have, we have a lot of workshops and everything. And, uh, and so we, we try to, not to, to, to uh, in French it's formaté. I don't know how to say that in, uh, in English. But Frame? Uh, yes. We try. Our goal, is, our goal is not to, 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 yes, to frame these young artists, but uh, to, to, it's like a maiotic, you know, and, uh, and, uh, but it's, um, there are a lot of um, aussi, constraints, but, um, but it's, it's a mixture between things to do and, uh, but to, to do it freely, but in the context of a school. Yes. We're, we are saying, this thing of creating in a very free way, but maybe because most of us, we have a background. So when we were in Frenois, we knew how to deal with the budget. We knew how to deal with the production person, with technicians. So we have this background of how to make a proper film. And, and because, for example, for me, before Frenois, I was in a very traditional cinema school where I learned how to write in the way that you were saying. Uh, and after Frenois, I, I think I'm, 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 I'm using both of those worlds. So I know, for example, for me to have financing, I need to write in a certain way or to think in a project in a certain way. And then after having the funding, it's another thing. We, I, for me, my feeling is that I need to, to, to twist a little bit the, the process of making films. Okay. So before I, uh, um, I, I, I want to also ask the, the, the colleagues from Bucharest the same thing, but before that, Francois, what about you? About my, what about you? What what do you think it's one of the the best things about Le Frenois and what do you think it's the one thing that you want to improve from uh, your perspective? Good question. Um, but the, the, the best thing it's 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 a uh, it's linked to to what to what they they said. It's a uh, I think it's really a place of uh, of, uh, of freedom in in the in the consumption of the 
of films of installation of uh, yes and that's that's for for sure and um, I, I think also it's a place where you can learn the, a lot but learn that are useful for you you know there is a program and you can there is a things that you are building with part of it and uh, that's something very oh, of course I didn't speak about the production part but uh, each student has a production manager um, who helped who helps uh, the the students uh, on the on their projects it's, it's very I think they, they learn a lot with that also for for the ones that that were who were not familiar to that and um, I don't know yes maybe <laughs> Maybe more more time. It's uh, to 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 go from the the second year to the to the first year to the second year. Maybe there is something uh, about that we, we have to think about. And, but uh, the reason the the reason or, or that the it is only two years because of uh, financial financial uh, uh, problems yes. or not? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. But maybe we can. Uh, um, we can build it differently or so we, we have to to and we are still thinking about that but uh, it's it's true that it's, it's it's sure that uh, it's in the dna of the of le Frenois. it's the there is this very specific thing what was the idea of alain flecher to to to, to create a place with the director of le Frenois. it's an artist also uh, to, to to create a place um where it's not the tools are important, of course, but it's more it's uh, even more important in the in the, the, the universe of the, of the artist and the way he can uh, make like a declination, like a declination of it, you know, with different tools. And uh, it's not it's not the idea of a progression. It's it's, it's the idea like to show all the um, the panels of the possibility of different tools. Okay. So Doru. I would start with you, with asking you about uh, uh, about what you find. Uh, I don't know what you find very. Uh, what do you what do you admire about the model in Le Frenois, and what you think maybe it's not adaptable from it, and why? Uh, first of all, I think we are we are speaking about two very different models. Because uh, at uh, at UNATE, uh, being an university, we are forced to be in the in the academical system, in the Bologna system, and it's quite hard to to get rid of all these uh, rules and uh, some sometimes very rigid uh, uh, limitations we we have. Uh, but on the other hand, I think uh, we have an advantage of having first the three years of, uh, of bachelor and after that two years of master. And I think the master could work more like, more like the, the, the system they have in La, uh, Le Frenois. And I, I think this is a very good example. La, Le Frenois, it's a very good example on how could ideally a master, a master program could work inside the, this um, Bologna system. Now in, uh, in, in our university, uh, we just develop a very, a very new line of uh, documentary film master degree. And uh, I think we heard the, the, the first promotion was last year. And uh, we have this year the second, the second uh, graduates uh, who come out of this uh, program. And Somehow we are still trying to 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 find the place of this uh, documentary program inside the inside the university inside the film faculty, because we also have the other master degree, which is the the, the film directing master, uh, which is applied on fiction, and uh, because it's a it's a very old master, it's already very well established, and the connection with all the other departments. Are, are, are already done and sometimes they are working. But we still have this problem that sometimes uh, these connections are not enough. And depending on uh, sometimes on students' choices or some other times on, on some uh, very objective uh, problems, like, uh, I don't know, in the last two years, we didn't have uh, st uh, students to the sound design uh, master program. So sometimes we are also working with uh, 
with uh, former graduates or people from the industry. Now, um, do you want me to answer to your questions? <laughs> yes. What is good and what is not good? Um, I, I always said, and this is something I discovered while I was a student in Unateche, that actually Unateche is behaving like, um, um, I don't know, very, in Romanian we say mofturasă. How, how do you translate moft in English? It's like a, not moody, no. Yeah, like a moody woman. It's like a moody woman. I mean, if you're why trying, woman? To, why woman? Uh, you know, I, there I, are moody like, men also. Okay, okay, let's say like a moody person. You know, and if you really try to to get something from that person, and uh, you if you really insist, you can have all the success you can. But if you let that person just live, it will become very neutral to you. You know, and I, I think this is probably the worst part of, uh, of the studies in Unateche that sometimes uh, the relations between students, professors, and uh, the production studio can be like that, can be very soft and uh, I don't know, somebody can get into the university and get out of the university without doing something noticeable. And I say that not as a problem of the students, but as a problem of the of the professors and of the system. You know, and, and in the same time, uh, probably the best part of, of studying in Unateche it's uh, meeting other people, meeting meeting sometimes meeting professors, sometimes uh, meeting people from outside from the industry. Uh, sometimes me meeting uh, colleagues from other departments or from theater faculty or, or from other universities in Bucharest and mixing them together in a project. Thank you. Uh, Lucia, I, I have the same two questions, but I would add another one. I'm curious, since you are now already finishing, almost finishing, you have one more year of studies uh, directing. I am curious what you also, also how did you find the films that you saw from Le Frenois, the films, the four films, compared to the films of your, you and your colleagues. I don't know if you found some, some let's say difference that you could generalize or not. So it's two questions for you. Uh, okay, uh, sh should I begin with the last one? So I yes. was really surprised watching uh, these four films that I found them like they have a very, they are made with a lot of freedom, you can sense that, like a personal freedom. Uh, but at the same time, I think they are very uh, coherent. And that is very, that, that impressed me a lot. You know that at the same time they um, they don't practice uh, traditional forms, but you can feel uh, them being uh, unitary in their view. So that was uh, what I really appreciated. And about your first question, well, I think it's a little bit hard for me to give a short answer because I'm still studying here and I'm I don't here. have that kind of distance and Dory is here also. Um, I think the best thing about Unetache that I didn't expect before being a student here is maybe, um, I don't know, the sense of community that I got. Maybe this is not available for all the students here, but for me it was, and it became a, a very important part of my life. And uh, also how much it got me uh, out of my comfort zone. And maybe the worst part would be that even if uh, nobody actually tells you how to make a film or what are you allowed to do or not allowed to do, you can still feel in more uh, subtle ways that uh, the school has one direction or certain directions that it follows and but again nobody i mean you do have the liberty to approach films the way you want uh, you want to but you know you have this subtle things in the kind of feedback you get the the 
um, how you are guided, that it feels like it has certain uh, directions artistically. And about what Doru was saying, uh, I was also thinking about comparing the two schools, the two institutions, that um, maybe it's, it's a good thing that in the first years, three years of bachelor, you do have this more um, concrete structure because we, we have to make a, a short film every semester. So you do get a lot of practice and we have more uh, rigorous limits and um, um, to do this uh, different, very different exercises. And I think that works uh, maybe for the first two years. Um, but I also believe that maybe the third year and the two years of masters could be more like um, um, because um, because once you you get over the I don't know the introduction the basic because it in in the beginning it is the first film school that you attend but maybe the last years could be more in this not such a rigid structure more freedom more flexibility that's that's what i think okay like more like a workshop you mean like a yeah like a laboratory workshop. laboratory okay okay thank you tudor thank you lucia what about you yeah so uh, first of all uh, i started a long time ago i mean uh, it's different than with lucia um because um but the good thing i'm going to start with the good thing is probably the colleagues i had like Dor said i mean um i wasn't expecting to, to learn so much from my colleagues and uh, some of them i mean and uh, i stayed uh, very good friends some of them and uh, some of my colleagues, uh, the, the people I work with and I continued to work with afterwards, I met in school and they were my colleagues. And okay, so uh, it, I think all of, you, all of you said the same thing. It, became, it becomes boring. The best part, okay, we understood. The best part about film schools is that you meet nice people. So let's go to the worst part. This is more interesting. Now you said the same thing. Meeting you. <laughs> Meeting me, who? yes. <laughs> No, it's it's nice. No, all all seven of you said, all eight of you, that this is a great thing about uh, film schools that you meet nice people. Yeah, well, it is because um, well, let's get to the bad part then, if you want to make it more interesting. Uh, it's a very personal thing. Uh, the worst part of uh, my studies is the fact that uh, I had a teacher um, and uh, she was very autocratic in her attitude towards us and uh, she she would uh, sometimes uh, i don't know uh, humiliate us in front mm -hmm. of our colleagues and it wasn't really linked to the school itself but to this particular person and um, also i studied for four years and we didn't change the teacher i mean she stayed our main teacher for the whole four years Mm. And uh, it, it was a very bad experience for me from this point of view because it was very inhibiting. I mean, I went there and the first semester I was very enthusiastic and writing and uh, I don't know, had ideas. And then when I had to make my first uh, film, um, I had to do this presentation uh, before the classroom and she totally destroyed me in front mm -hmm. of everybody and, uh, you know, uh, and this was something that really affected me on a personal level. And um, afterwards, I just tried to, to avoid her, which is not something you really want to do with a, with a tutor. I mean, you want to, to, to learn from, uh, from him or her or, uh, you know, uh, have, have, a, have a relationship that's, uh, that's helpful. And it wasn't the case for me. And... Um, but this is something personal as in, in, in any school. I mean, uh, whatever system you may have, the, the people that are there are gonna be very important. Mm. And uh, this was one of the, mm. I don't know how you can avoid it. I mean, uh, maybe it's, it's 
Maybe it also has something to do with the fact that, as uh, Doro said, the Bologna system and the grades, and you get graded, so you are, shall we say, at the mercy of the teacher, because you get grades at the end of the on on your projects. So, uh, so this kind of uh, I don't know really um, dictatorship behavior. Um, uh, people who behave like this, they, they can do it. And uh, I don't know how to change that. I don't know what, what kind of changes uh, uh, could, could uh, you know, could, um, okay. could make the students not so vulnerable in the relationship with the teacher. I think this is one of the things that mm -hmm. uh, troubles me, uh, this vulnerability of the students. Mm. in relation to the teacher i mean if the teacher wants he can be he can do whatever he wants and he can you know drop you and you have to to repeat the year or whatever but this is mm. the system I don't but know. by the way in left Renoir, do you do you give mark are there marks people get grades uh like grades this is the way you say in english no i think it's marks but the the the, the there is not no, so it's not this pressure. But Tudor, what about the films? But there, is a, there, there is a diploma, a diploma from the school, and uh, but it's it's based on the on the words, on the works. Yes, on the results. Yeah, but it's uh, so not not all of them get a diploma. Uh, nearly all they have. Uh huh. And uh, it's very hard. I, I don't remember even since I'm I'm working in Le Frenois, someone who, who who didn't get it. But uh, there they, they so, are, they, they are variations. You can have like a, mm -hmm. like a, just a diploma, like something a bit dry, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and after you can have uh, more and more felicitation and uh, this kind uh -huh. of. Thing. Oh. The graduation. Yeah. Just to to answer. Yeah, so you, so you don't have this kind of competition uh, that is b b with marks and grades, which which is which which is seems to be very important in the more traditional schools. I hope not. Like ours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tudor, I wanted to to also ask you about the films uh, because you have a lot of experience in Unatech. So I. Well, you wrote me about the films uh, from Le Frenois, but not very explicitly about your opinion. Did you find them to have something very different than, like to have a kind of direction or what, what were your opinion about them? Um, well, first of all, not connected uh, with, with the school in any way, just the films in, their, in themselves. Uh, I was very impressed by them and uh, um, I, I find that it's very interesting, this combination of um, a poetic approach, kind of poetic approach or new kind of methods and language and experimenting with language um, linked to a subject that could be uh, in a way treated in a more conventional way. And I think uh, we need a lot to find out about uh, really I mean, serious or less serious uh, subject or things that are going on in the world, uh, but uh, um, presented uh, in this kind of new perspective. And this is what I found. I mean, for example, uh, Flores, um, uh, the film, I'm really happy that uh, George uh, arrived there first and not, uh, not a crew from National Geographic, just to give an example, who, I mean, I was just trying to imagine what would uh, uh, you know a more conventional documentary filmmaker would have done with this place, which is in itself very you know mesmerizing. I and, can I just say something for me to destroy your your, yeah. your what you're saying because the film it's a fiction. Flores, it's a fiction. It's not it's not a documentary. Okay. <laughs> yes, but the... but still, but, but still the, the perspective and the way you would approach such a location and such a place and the, the way you can explore it, uh, um, I mean, 
you see, uh, George, what uh, more conventional uh, separation uh, uh, between genres does to us because we have a uh, documentary department, fiction department. So at some point we get mixed up. For me, when I first saw your film, for example, um, of course, you know, of course, the, the dystopic element about not, you know, the pandemic element about it, it's obvious that it's a fiction, but I, uh, I still surprise myself, although I watch a lot of films that mix a lot of, uh, uh, tropes, how do you say, the characteristics from different kinds of traditions of cinema. I still surprise myself by trying to to shelter, to, to put them in, uh, not shelter, um, uh, to put to put in boxes. My first, my first, because this is how I was brought to in a way, you know, you know what I mean? So I think this is why, because we, we think a lot like this in this kind of traditional schools because students have to do i don't know they have very specific uh, teams not teams um, types of cinema each year they have fiction at some point then in second year they have documentary you know so it's they don't have enough time to think about uh, uh, i think uh, to think about um, uh, going outside of the of the borders of the so-called genres because they have a you few time to, just to understand the traditional forms, let's say. You're speaking the, just about the bachelor level. The bachelor, yes. Well, yes. in the master, each year they have to make one film. And I think in the master, at least the, the, the freedom, it's, uh, it's mm. a little bit bigger. Yeah. So sorry, sorry, Tudor. Yes. I, th I said a little bit. Richard. But this is this is also something, you know, this is something very beautiful about your films, all of all of the films, because they mix this, uh, let's say, a, a lot of um, um, traditions of cinema and a lot of, you know, they they play with 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 many. Um, um, how do you say? Um, not necessarily genres like characteristics, like techniques. <laughs> Techniques of narr narration and techniques of, uh, of of approaching reality in a way, because at the same time they they approach reality and they um, uh, fictionalize it. All all of the films in a way, and it, and this is something that um, it's not in all of the cases very obvious. I think, especially for example in Isabel film. In Isabel's film, the first impression that you have, I think, in Isabella Mora is of a, um, of a more plain documentary in a way, you know, it, 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 it looks at, at the first um, um, view, uh, like it's more documentary, the more, doc the more documentary than the other, that it's documenting uh, in a more, um, I don't know, like a, like a specific context of a marginalized, uh, um, quarters and and the way the, the, the children are playing there, etc. And you you understand little by little, you know, the construction, how it is constructed. And, you, and I felt that this is something very, very important in the construction of all the films, that at least the films that Francois uh, selected, but that work in very different ways. And I think this is something that we don't play so much in more traditional schools. Uh, and I think that you probably, you, do, you didn't even think about this, no? While, while, while doing them, while, if, is it, what is documentary? What is fiction? What is, it, I don't, it didn't seem necessarily to be part of the process, which is already something uh, quite specific, I think, or particular in a, um, in a creative process, I guess. Um, okay, so, uh, sorry Tudor, coming back to you. Uh, no, I mean, this is what I found interesting, this, uh, play, uh, what, what, what you said already, and I, I was thinking about, um, um, about the fact that, uh, you know, while making this, this kind of film, uh, how, how you would have to, to write it before you, you do it, how you would have to present it, maybe in a more traditional school, let's say, 
you have to go through this exercise of uh, writing a presentation and having an argument and uh, you know what uh, um, your um, um, stylistic approach you have to describe it and to describe why the project is relevant in any way and I think that uh, because you are forced to do that, uh, you sometimes become more conventional, even in, in your way of, uh, of approaching the film. It's like uh, George said uh, that uh, he has to mix these kind of two approaches, uh, the more traditional in which you have to write in a certain way to get the financing. And then, but then it's a different part. It's a different way of approaching it. But students uh, in our school, at least, they have to write these uh, presentations, and it makes them think about the project in a in a certain way, mm. I think, and and it already uh, you know uh, um, affects uh, not in a bad way uh, necessarily, but the way that that they conceive the films, they think about them. And, yes, uh, but, but maybe this is it has this has a lot to do with the fact that in our in our case in general you have to start from narrations, no, from narratives, yeah, from, from constructing narratives. And in 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 uh, in these films, it seems like they started from. This is this is interesting to find out. Uh, uh, but for example, in Isabella Mora. Um, I don't. I didn't. I didn't get the connection, you know, by watching the who is Isabella Mora, etc. I didn't know about the poet, for example, and then I searched for it, and I realized that probably it started from the poet, the film. I don't know. So it it seems it seems that it starts somewhere, and it develops, and probably it goes in completely different directions. This is what you, I I felt, in in like for, uh, or in Daphne's film, which is like a film. It's like a diary in in a way. Uh, uh, constructed with uh, with these voiceovers of uh, um, of, a, of, a, of a girl who who, who um, describes uh, her feelings that are related to to the context in uh, in Greece uh, during the crisis, the economical crisis, no, and but at the same time it uses cinema verite techniques by asking uh, uh, people on the streets uh, very mixed type of questions uh, and then uh, um, so uh, uh, so it's also it's very hard to 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 realize where it started and you know if it started from a personal perspective or it's or it's a fictive fictive character because the the girl in the end it's not you no it's uh, it is no so it's uh, but so and I could go over and like in Jorge's, in Jorge, George, probably it's it's not so easy to, to depict, for me at least, it wasn't so easy to depict a, pos a possible starting point. Uh, um, so I, I'm really wondering what, what it was and how it developed. Uh, and in Francisco, Fra Fra Francisco, probably it was the... Um, the story of this uh, Chinese, it, it seemed to be like this kind of development from a story of four uh, uh, Chinese uh, men who, who, who died while trying to, to get to, uh, to Chile, no? To, uh, but, this, but it mixes so many, um, um, how do you say? Um, types of documenting uh, something and fictionalizing. So I would like to ask you to develop a little bit about this process, about the way, the, the starting points of your projects and the way they, I don't know, they developed, if you remember, uh, uh, by mixing more um, elements. It's a stupid question. I don't know about who starts. I don't know who wants you, for example, Francisco. Mm. If somebody wants to talk before I, somebody have the ideas clear already. <laughs> Isabel, Isabel is always the first who speaks. 
My, my English is so bad, so I prefer uh, to be the first. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yes, I um, totally agree what, uh, what about, uh, um, what about you, you said. Um, in fact, yes, uh, for me, the, the first desire, it was to adapt uh, a piece of theater from a, a writer on the Pierre de Mondiague. And um, uh, the name of the piece is Isabella Mora. And uh, I found the, the book and I, I think the, the writing was very beautiful and I was completely, uh, you know, uh, um, take by the, by, by the language, by the poesy and everything. And uh, me, I'm working with children for a long time. <laughs> In my, uh, uh, in my research when I was in university, I was uh, working about children and arts too. So it uh, was 10 years I, I'm working like that. And uh, so I really want to, the first impression, so it was, yes, I want to adapt this piece of theater with children, but I don't know how to do. And, uh, and of course, this piece of theater, it's very, uh, violent and uh, the language is very uh, precise and uh, yes I it was it was uh, yes the first desire and after it's when I uh, I really want to shoot in the north of, of France for me it was important to 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 be very close to the Frenois and uh, I discovered a place and it was you know like a um, when you fall in love and I discover the place with these children and I say, okay, well, in fact, I want to, to do the movie here. So it's now the place where uh, more in my um, imagination and in the reality than the place of uh, André Pierre de Montpian. Okay, when, uh, uh, um, how to adapt this text very, Liter uh, with a strong literature and uh, the, the, with the life of the children and mm -hmm. uh, we live in particular condition, uh, how, how, um, how make a connection. And it was, yes, the beginning of, the, of my work. And uh, I spent a long time uh, in this place and uh, playing with children and see everything and in fact, I find the solution for me and the, the best solution and, and uh, the, the, the film I want to, to make. The, collection, the connection it was about the language, but about the, the, po the poetry of the, the children. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in fact, for me, the best way to adapt uh, Isabella Mora, it's uh, basis, um, um, it's how to to reinject the story in in this place, but uh, without you know force some things. And uh, in fact, um, there is a little child, uh, child sorry, uh, Adriana, and uh, she she was talking every, every time uh, about story, very um, hard story, maybe. Uh, some things up about our imagination, but mm -hmm. there is uh, there was dramatic facts who uh, what happened in this place. So she was, you know, like a, I don't know the word in English. Sorry, it's difficult. Um, um, C'était la conteuse. So she, ah, the the storyteller. Yeah, the storyteller, but but a storyteller uh, tells the truth the and, mm -hmm. and and not the truth too and it's why it's so fascinating mm -hmm. and uh, and in fact uh, uh, I um, je, je, je lui ai raconté l'histoire d'Isabelle Amora I oh, tell you, her told, you told her the story of Isabelle Amora, Amora yes. and she reappropriates uh, all the story and uh, mm -hmm. the, the so you say so the, the, you say that the, the, the little uh, the little child, the little girl. Yeah. Uh, she. So, so your film uh, includes m many children uh, in a different. Uh, uh, actually, it's. I think it's two, 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 two princip 
two two uh, main uh, two main uh, let's say approaches. One is these portraits, which yeah. are a little bit abstract abstractized in general you know they don't have a, a, a like you don't see what, uh, a, a context uh, uh, background. Background, maybe background yes uh, and then you have them like this is very interesting that you are saying that it's based on a, on a play actually because they look like they are a little bit on the stage in this uh, yeah. frame that you put them and one of the of the girls is like a protagonist because she appears um, more often than the others, no? And you say that you, you told her the, the story of, uh, of Isabella Mora and yeah. that what is in the film, it was what she understood from it or the way she, she re-edited re the story. Yes, no? she reinvents the story and, uh, and, uh, and Isabella Mora, uh, yes, we become uh, her best friends, uh, killed, but uh, yeah. yes. And you worked a lot on the sound, no? The sound seems to be very constructed. Uh, many times very, uh, it's very loud, it's very dangerous. It, it creates this kind of uh, aggressive uh, ambience, no? It's... Yeah. Yes, it's, it was, a, uh, in fact, yes, um, very constrict and, and sometimes, uh, no. It's, it, um, I just want to say that, you know, it's, uh, between the, the difference uh, bit, between documentary and fiction, in fact, for me, it's it's uh, the case all the time. But uh, it uh, depends the shoot. If, uh, if I, I want to make plans, sometimes I, I have a documentary approach. But two minutes after, it will be completely different. So all the time, it's completely mixed. So it will be very interesting to you know the. Um, to see the movie and say, okay, this plan, no, it's, uh, it's not documentary, but this plan is completely doc documentary. For example, um, and sometimes it's um, because we are, in fact, it's just, on, on est dans la quête de la, pardon, je vais le dire en français, mais on est dans la quête de quelque chose de tellement difficile et qui pour moi, qui est de chercher l'instant de grâce ou de beauté uh -huh. et de ce qui est so you are it's it's if i understood correctly it's difficult to find the, the state of grace no uh, yeah yes. and beauty and um, and et de la justesse surtout de qu'est-ce qui est juste mm -hmm. et, um, and uh, and sometimes uh, it's it's happen uh, like that and uh, you must just be there and shoot and mm -hmm. sometimes you must you know constrict and constrict and it's wrong and uh, and it's not like that, and you find it, but it's uh, all the time a mix between two two approach. For, for me, it's like that. And for example, uh, uh, the the plan with a little girl uh, with red hair, it's just one shot, and the sound is the sound of this of what happened and what happened. Okay, it's not in the in the movie Con concretely. We, we don't know how how it happens, but I can. Say, say what happened. In fact, there is a drug dealer, you know, in the completely uh, on the back, and there is um, a police woman and, and policeman who are in the, you know, in the in the place, and they are looking for the drug, and she's very scared, and um, and she said all everybody who are, you know, walking and uh, running and mm -hmm. everything, and it's this moment and I was just shooting and this happened and it's 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 a document but it's a, yeah yeah it's a, yeah it looks it's very interesting because it looks I'm also curious about Flavia's opinion here as a critic uh, and cinephile but I, for me it was very interesting about the film because it looks like a film uh, that tries to be I don't know that that has this aspiration to be like a like a theater play, it could work like a theater play, like a like a documentary on the on the aggressive uh, uh, life uh, from the periphery. Uh, it also works like a like a portrait of uh, of childhood. For example, it reminded me a little bit of a Claire Simon film, uh, Recreation, uh, mm -hmm. at, at a certain level um, about the. 
the, the way that the, the children are depicted, the, the, the aggressiveness, let's say, of, the, uh, of their place, for example. Um, yeah, and at yeah. the, and at the same also... time, it's also an, it, it, it also, like, uh, if you know about Isabella Mora, because she was a, a poet from the 60th century who was also killed in a violent way. You no, know? this yeah. is also yes, during the link. Yes. Yeah. yes, so this is also another possible uh, existence of the film uh, as a yes. as a kind of adaptation of of her in a way. Yes. But for me, in fact, the, more, the most important in my work is, you know, um, uh, I love poetry and uh, literature, etc. But it's not uh, uh, je viens, in fact. It's from not where you come poem. from. Yes. And where I come from, it's people who are, don't speak, who are, don't read book and everything. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, I want to, to shoot uh, people and some place I, I know, uh, mm -hmm. but in different way. Uh, and I think uh, to, because uh, very strong st stories are not only for, you know, bourgeois people. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's, uh, uh, c'est redonner oui, de, de la dignité, de la beauté aux gens, en fait, en les, en les percevant de manière très, enfin, aussi, aussi forte que des, que des personnages qui sont dans des livres et qui sont des, des héros qui sont nobles, en fait. So you want to, to, sh to show them like in a, in a dignified way, like similar to the, to the characters from the novels, no? This is yeah. what you are, trying, you are saying, mm -hmm. to, 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 sh to show that they... They are interesting and that know that and that they and, and the, and they can be heroes of uh, yes, of, of your attention yeah yes and the, and the beauty of the language and everything and the, yeah. for me it's the most important yeah but I have a question out of ignorance uh, is it is it between the I don't know the um, the lyrical, let's say, part of your film and and the lyrics of the poems of Isabella di Mora is there is there any link or not i i have not read her her poems i know oh, that there uh, exists you, some poems of hers no yes you can find uh on the internet it's a, a very com very sad poetry but very interesting uh, but for me yes it's a, I, I i i i never uh, take uh, all the all this poem and, and, and see mm -hmm. all this poem. For me, it's what's more about the, the piece of theater of Mondial who interests mm -hmm. me uh, more. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and in fact, uh, if I, si, si je dois revenir aussi sur la construction du film. Uh, if you speak about the construction, no? of yes. the structure. Uh, yeah. Au début, je voulais aussi intégrer, uh, comment dire, les... Des, la voix de la mer en fait la voix de la mer de Isabella Mora uh -huh. et euh, en fait so in the beginning you wanted to so yeah. now uh, uh, I am translating from France I cannot <laughs> from French I cannot believe it so you you wanted to integrate the voiceover yeah. of the mother no yes but it was you know very um, uh, uh, it, 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 it say it in French let's try it okay, <laughs> En fait, elle avait une voix extrêmement dure, c'était très littéraire, c'était très intéressant. So she had a very tough voice, very literary and very interesting. Ouais. Mais, euh, mais du coup, ça apportait une autre dimension au, au film, euh, qui, était, qui était trop compliqué, je pense, pour moi aussi à, à assumer, et qui déforçait uh -huh. aussi les, le rapport avec les enfants et à, et à cette enfant. Oh, endroit. wait, 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 so... I'm not so good, so uh, I'm so uh, I already forgot. So, but she, <laughs> but she brought something that was uh, another dimension. The film, another dimension that you did, you couldn't assume, you couldn't uh, integrate at the at that point, no, uh, in the relation with the children, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Et donc, euh, j'ai fini par euh, par euh, enlever cette voix, mais ça a été une étape de travail très importante. Justement, la voix de la mère intervenait sur les portraits des enfants. Ah, oh, yeah, intervene. Uh, so, so she, she intervened. Sorry. So she, she appeared. Uh, uh, I forgot. The, she was the, the 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 voice of the mother was appearing on the um, children's. Ah, like like it was the children's voice. Uh, no. No, she. Um, 
Tu commentes et on the on the uh, actions of the children. Oui, c'est comme si elle c'est comme si elle parlait aux enfants, sauf que c'était une une voix qui était seulement écrite et qui venait du texte de Mandia. Ok. Vanina. It was uh, it was <laughs> it was like a, a voiceover. It was really written and it was as if it was coming from I don't know. I j'ai pas entendu la fin. Euh, en fait, c'est. Tu parles très vite. Ah pardon. En fait, c'est une Enfin, c'est une voix off écrite, mais qui est tirée de la pièce. Donc, c'est comme si la mère parlait aux ah, enfants. Tirée de, la... tirée de la pièce, OK. It's yeah. from the play, and it's as if uh, the mother ah. is talking. OK. Uh -huh. OK, so you started from here, and then you decided to, to just let the children... Uh, yes. Uh, it was more strong, and it was enough. Mm -hmm. And it was enough, and it's uh, like an archaeological... Uh, trace the, mm -hmm. the the title and of course Isabella Mora is all the little girl you see in the in the in the movie and, and it's that and for mm -hmm. me it's just enough. Yeah. So Flavia, I was wondering about uh, your view on the film on Isabella Mora. I have to say, in, in equal measure, I'm not acquainted with the works of uh, with this writer. It, it could definitely be be something that I could explore now. But um, I mean, of course, yeah, there is this double convention going on in the film, right? There's these moments where the characters are facing the, uh, the camera on the one hand. On the other hand, you have these moments that seem to be observational with these ingenuous interactions between the characters. And these are two succeeding moments. And most of the children, you can notice that they're from the Van years or they're their children. And I think that's a pretty risky line, in my opinion, that the film runs on, that you have these children from the Van Lier that are definitely using a very, very harsh language, especially for their, for their age. The, I mean, in contrast to Claire Simon, where, of course, in Claire Simon's recreation, you also have this, this uh, running thought of uh, infantile violence and of this, these violent pulsions uh. that children exhibit in their mutual interactions. Um, here, it's, uh, I found it quite, I mm, don't know really how to situate the fact that there's this, this character, so almost like in the last five minutes of the film, there's this red-headed girl that appears at one point and she's visibly, also by the fact of being distance, of being in this position where she's listening to the sounds of the other children, to the various obscenities that they're throwing around, but also by how she's reacting sort of, how she's dressed up, you can see that she's not from there, or she's not part of their in-group and not interacting with them. Of course, the film goes back to, to the Baumier children. Mm. So, I'm, not yeah, sure if, I'm not sure if you don't speak a little bit too. I don't know, Ask. Isabel, do you understand? Do you, do you follow? Yeah. Because, yes. I, I understand more than I talk. Ah, good. Um, okay. um, yeah, and, and of course, I mean, aside from Claire Simon, I was also sort of reminded by the way that Angela Schanelik uses these insertions of children in, in her two latest films. So in The Dreamed Path, we have this interesting child character that she, she throws around sort of this very mm. unpredictable element in the, in the film's discourse. And I think that historically, the figure of the child, you know, in a sense, is all this vaguely incontrollable instance that you have in your films now that I mean, oh. post Shirley Temple, post the child actor ideal and so on. Children usually, and especially in documentaries, there's this, this very uncontrollable force. And that's why I was sort of reminded also by Shana, because there is some control here. There is something that is keeping them there, that's keeping them in front of the camera. And... Oh. But by the way, Isabel, did you have uh, uh, another stupid question, probably coming from somebody who has a uh, training in uh, critics? Uh, I'm not training, I, I wrote about cinema. Did you have some, um, um, how do you say, repere, uh, like some um, filmmakers that you were uh, thinking of or films that you, or you don't work like this. They don't, you know, when you work on a project, it doesn't help you to, because I was mentioning Claire Simon, Flavia was mentioning Angela Shanelek, but of course this is our, uh, boring way of uh, putting things in uh, boxes as critics. 
No, no, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, in fact, uh, during this movie, um, I was thinking a lot and uh, Pedro Costa gave me a uh, oh. fort tous les jours, every day. Right. <laughs> I oh. love Pedro Costa, he was uh, one of my favorite uh, filmmaker. And um, it was uh, very important for me to see that we can make a movie um, with uh, very few people and in, with a li little economy. And for me, it's, it's, uh, it was like a liberation because uh, I've, I, um, I feel myself so I can go everywhere with my camera and, uh, and film. And, uh, and sometimes some friends uh, can uh, can come and help me. For example, I I, I shoot during uh, two months uh, alone, and uh, some friend of mine, uh, three, come just for uh, uh, for I think it was seven days for finish the movie and uh, and uh, take sound and etc. Et but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, the fact to to make movie in a very uh, yes in a De, de la meilleure façon pour moi, de la façon la plus juste, en tout cas. The, 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 the more, the, the just way, not just, uh, the correct way ouais. of, uh, yeah, of making a film, yes, for you. Yes, it, uh, it was, yes, d'être de, de, dans cette économie-là, très, très légère avec des gens que j'aime et en prenant le temps de passer du temps avec les gens euh, que j'ai envie de filmer. Ah, ok, so to, to, to work with people you love, uh, no Yeah. And and this and make made it easier to 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 film it, no? Yeah, I and I need to spend time and uh, and so when you are alone and when you share the life with people, it's more easier. It's not you know like big cinema, and yeah. for me, over the 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 work of Pedro Costa, it was okay. Maybe I can do some movie too mm -hmm. because. Et euh, euh, le premier que j'ai vu, c'est dans la chambre de Vanda. Euh, ah, c'est le film de Pedro Costa, non Le premier qu'elle a vu. Ah, c'était le premier, ok. Et, euh, et je me suis dit, d'accord, en fait, j'ai besoin que de ça. Et ce que je désire, c'est filmer quelqu'un et venir avec qui je suis, avec le matériel que j'ai. Et je suis, je suis sûre que c'est possible de faire quelque chose. What I what I I want to do the same. I, I I I what I need to know is that I want to film some some somebody and I want to to go there with what I have, what I am and what I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Great. So Daphne, what about you? About your uh, process of what what did you start from? Uh, I I don't even really remember. I think it was something about making a film that would mysteriously link people who have no hope and still go on. <laughs> something weird like that. And I was also obsessed with um, octopuses because they have uh, three hearts. So oh, okay. uh, I think I had probably written something about that. Yeah. At that moment, uh, politically, it was quite hard. There was a crisis uh, and all that. Um, and the only thing I want just to add uh, in confront to what we were talking about, about Renoir in the future, we deal with that. Uh, they do ask us to write a lot of things uh, up until the month of December. So we do present many drafts uh, and many like dossier, many notes mm -hmm. of intention. And then our project gets validated in December if it does, and then we shoot. I'm just like saying this because it's super free, but you do have to learn how to uh, make your intentions clear, even for such projects, which is quite useful for uh, us. Uh, and so when I went to Greece to shoot this, I, I couldn't find these people because I don't, I don't know who they were. Uh, I mean, I found some and then I was super ashamed to film them. I, it was really strange and I had to come back with something. So I started filming um, something like a diary. And at the same time, I asked a friend who was living in Greece at that moment to keep her own diary, uh, if she could, just like that. Uh, and I knew I was going to shoot a few scenes, like the last dance scene, which was some kind of reenactment of something I had lived. And I knew the Acropolis had to um, collapse. So I went back to France with this uh, material. 
uh, I was editing and I asked my friend a few months later if she kept a diary and she said yes. So at some point I put everything together and I saw there were things that um, corresponded, which really mm -hmm. surprised me and made me think that, okay, maybe there is something here. Maybe the film is not wrong. And that, so I structured this part and then I knew I wanted the um, the cinema verité, let's say, part. The interviews, yeah. Mm -hmm. I needed to have a dialogue, like it couldn't be just this voice of a young woman. It, it needed to correspond to something else, more collective, let's mm -hmm. say. So I went back to Greece a second time uh, and uh, I shot these, uh, just to make like the long story short. Mm -hmm. uh, the film really became a film, let's say, in uh, in the editing. Uh -huh. And uh, I imagine that probably, or I don't know, I uh, how much, how important was the editing? Because I imagine it was, while I was watching it, it seemed like a very uh, fluid kind of structure, like very, uh, at the same time, there are recurrences, there are things that repeat, you know, uh, as types of you know the interviews the the, the dialogues the um, um the mood you know the this mood that you are describing of desperation and you know not knowing uh, where you are going to etc and this mix between the personal um and the so society that goes in the same direction so this this is something recurring but at the same time there for example in your film it was the octopus at some point uh, so these kind of elements, now that you are saying, they they make a little more sense in a way. But in the film, they made a sense, but like you know, an allegorical way, not very clear way. But it function, you know. It, and this is why it, I was wondering while watching it, how it was constructed, and it was a lot constructed. I understand now on the way of doing, uh, of of doing it, and maybe when you got to editing, it was already structured or you played a lot there also with the rhythm and it, it wasn't structured at all i think the first time i came back uh with the images i told ben rivers that it's going to be a black film it's only going to be black because i failed and there is not ah, okay <laughs> so, but uh, i did have all these elements uh that i had worked on so there was the the idea was that we arrive in a post-apocalyptic place uh which is oh. Greece. So I had uh, asked for a guy in the US to send me some archive uh, material with uh, ancient Greek things and uh, the octopus. Mm -hmm. uh, who, the octopus would be maybe this ancient creature that doesn't care about our tragedies or I don't know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so there were all these elements and slowly, slowly I put them in the editing table and saw how they, how they can function. But I mean, I think that if somebody reads my dossier that I had written at the beginning, you can find the film, even though everything went uh, differently. So it was about how to bring all the elements together and still have a narrative, even if it's from the voiceover, then the narrative continues to the, to the questions and the answers that someone gives. And then you have maybe something absurd like an animal. But uh -huh. I, to me, it was the way that we inhabit this weird place and someone can read it differently I, can, I mean i can give explanations for a lot of things but yeah yeah like you nobody would know mm -hmm. very interesting yeah no i i was not thinking you know i was not thinking about what you said uh, when, while watching it but it makes sense about this uh, dystopian uh, uh, apocalyptic part that you are now that it's a little bit uh, because you know, having seen a lot of things about Greece uh, and documentaries about that period, it didn't seem so much so dystopic compared to what I've seen in other films about that period, you know. But yet, it, it makes sense now that you are saying, which makes it even more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we go, we come back to you because I want the others also to, to be able to, to interact on your film. But because you were talking about dystopias, what about you, uh, George? Uh, what was your starting point and the way you constructed your well, your documentary about uh, the Azal? How do you, how are they? What is the name of them in English? It's in Romanian. It's Hortensi, the flowers. But what the, the name of the flowers in English? It was I a Latin name. What? 
hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, yes. The pandemic of hydrangeas. Yes. So I, I started telling that the film was a fiction, but now that's where the tricky stuff comes. Because yes, but we are a documentary film festival, so for us everything is documentary. Exactly. No, no, no. And the film and the film actually went to a lot of documentary film festivals. And 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 the beginning of the project, and I say it in the film as a fictional thing, but actually it's true. Because the first time that I went to these islands, I, it was because of my father that he's a military, mm -hmm. and and when I when I was there to visit him, I was completely blown away with with the the the, the quantity of of hydrangeas that the the islands have. It's not like in the movie, as you see, but if you look for pictures of the Azores, how they are in the summer, in July, August, they, in, in the roads and in the mountains, you can find these amazing natural installations of, of hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. And so I went there and I got completely, and I fall in love with this, with this image. And I started to think about a fictional project with with this subject. Mm -hmm. And and so I I wrote a very since we are talking also about process of making movies, I I wrote a, a very narrative script mm -hmm. with dialogues. It was the film was about um, a director that would go to these islands and he would meet two young soldiers. Mm. But, but it was supposed to be shot as, as, as three characters. So it was supposed to be the director and the two soldiers discovering the island. And while I was doing the film, I started to understand the director should be me. And so the point of view of the film should, of the, the, the point of view should be of the director that was going to visit the islands. And so I start, I start to go to the islands more often and I discover the, the main character of the film, that he's really a military by coincidence. And he, he told me about his best friend that he, he, that he lives with him in one of these islands. And so suddenly the film starts to make sense because immediately the fiction that I was going to do, suddenly it was almost real. You, you have this platonic relation between these two boys, you have a, a, an island full of flowers. And so the film was there and mm -hmm. I, I wrote it as a fiction, but the film was there. And the only thing that I, want, that I needed to do was to pay attention for the things that they were happening while I was there. Mm -hmm. And and yes, it was and, and it happened. And then I discovered a lot of things in the editing. I, I had a lot of time to shoot for it for a short film, for example, that it's something that is not very common uh, while you're not in a film Focus. school. Mm -hmm. When you work with a production company, they don't give you a lot of time. And but I had it. And so all of these elements. I, I think it reflects on the film that it's now. Hmm. Flavia, you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to ask, in fact, about the, there's a scene uh, towards the end, it's actually the ending of the second part of the film, of the second chapter, where the main character confesses to you that he had this strange dream in which his camouflage costume was turned into blue and and purple and it, it, was that scripted or was that a spontaneous thing that happened because I, I that seems was extremely touching for me and i remember thinking seeing this is oh god this is every documentarian's dream a situation like this suddenly appears in front of the camera and it's just this magical pure moment and learning that your film is a fiction was a bit hard breaking in that sense so that's why i really want to find out about this scene yeah but you know I, it's really <laughs> interesting that you say that the film was selected in a lot of documentary film festivals etc because the tones of the film 
also not documentary i don't know uh, it, like the colors you know how do you say the the tone the color tones of the film they are so constructed and uh, fictionalizing in a in a beautiful way of course whatever sorry uh, no, but, going but back to the question yeah but I, I just need to say first that the the documentary film festivals that the film it was selected they were festivals that they explore the notion of documentary. I, I don't think any documentary film festival select my film thinking that was something yeah. completely... Or look, in Romania, a lot of us think that it's a documentary. But you know, we, we are also uh, uh, Dadaist a little bit, you know yeah. what I mean. But uh, Flavia, I'm, I'm going to destroy, destroy more of your dreams because that scene was scripted. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it's very beautiful, but it's, it's, I mean, even if it's scripted, like, let's make an abstraction of this dichotomic you now appreciation of cinema, it still, it works very, very well. I mean, it's... No, but you know, George, what, what they didn't teach you in Le Frenois, apparently it's to lie for the sake of the audience. Never. It's very Never. important for, uh, I for actually selling like, artists. I actually like to contextualize the, the film and to get to because I, I understand what you're saying and I, if you are not the first person that, uh, that is telling me that I should have a different approach of talking about the film, but I like to give the, the because the film has some kind of romantic way of thinking of documentary, mm -hmm. of, a, of a filmmaking, of a filmmaker approaching two young, beautiful guys and and but and and when you're seeing, you feel that type of manipulation between of some kind of desire. And in this film, I really like to 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 to, to accentuate that that it, it was one of the purposes. It was it was fiction, because it, it was not something that I was taking of them, and they knew exactly the film that I was doing. And and for me. It was, that was very very important, mm -hmm. and so and so I think it's important as well to tell the public what is what what was scripted or not, because also this idea of and this is a very old question the idea of fiction and, and nonfiction the scene it, it it works because the main character he's he's amazing in front of the camera and and in the end that's what it matters it doesn't matter if if it was him thinking about that dialogue or if it was me, what it matters is that there, were, there was something happening that things worked. My relation with him, him being amazing, the conditions of production, and, and in the end, cinema is all about that. Yeah, yeah. and did you have some, uh, like, um, I forgot to ask Daphne about it, but did you do you do you work with films in mind or I don't know with 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 specific uh, um, I don't know what you know what I mean like um, yes I or you play with it very much you seem to play with 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 cinephilia because the title doesn't have to do with the birds I I, I was sure that it's Hitchcockian or not with the birds. Because it's like flowers and birds, and I was thinking that it's very Hitchcockian uh, <laughs> cinephilic quotation, no? Uh, I, I and, never thought about that. And, and no also one... the construction of the film a little yes. bit. I found but, it to be... but I love the association. But I don't, I don't think I have, I, for this specific film, I don't think I have like, mm -hmm. like direct references. Of course, the film goes, it brings a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, other films that that pops up in, in my mind, like mm. even the structure of of the editing, it has something with experimental et ethnography, and that's why it gives you some kind of elements of of being real and mm. and some psychedelic with the colors and and the flashes of the sixteen. Mm. So, we, of course, I have all those references, but I don't have I don't have concrete films that I can tell you that the film was inspired by. I will tell you something, but maybe you will get mad at me. It reminded me a little bit, a little bit, but it's better. Um, with uh, Teddy Williams, a, a former uh, student of Le Frenois. Do you know his films, Ted, Eduardo Williams? 
I do. I, uh, yes. I just a little bit, but not the not the you know he, not the aesthetics of the film. Uh, what do you I don't think know it why. Is Sorry. What do you think it is? The connection. I think it's from the um, from the boys, you know, a little bit from the con from the relation between the boys and um, uh, the middle part, the one that seems to be the most documentary in a way, the one about the 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 honey coming from the flowers and the Dutch people. Uh, exp I don't know this. I don't know, just a little bit, but. Yeah, well, maybe just 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 to to prove you that I'm a film critic, so that I say a lot of uh, stupid, boring uh, things in boxes. But maybe Put that's what I was saying in the beginning. That's maybe a connection between the Frenois. It's the relation between the students and what we learn with each other, and the yeah. type of connections that we do watching and meeting other other students more than the tutors. Yeah. I just want to say that I was kidding about the fact that film critics do this. So, uh, <laughs> but we do we do put things into boxes, which is something very you can play with it also, and it it can become very ludical. But Daphne, because I forgot about to ask you, do you work with 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 a certain uh, films in mind, or did you or not? No, you didn't think about anything like this. Um, I mean, I didn't have any specific reference for the film, but I definitely where was watching uh, Chronique d'Anneté by uh, okay. or uh, Le Volumet, uh, Chris Marquet. So Cinema Verité films. Cinema Verité at that point, because I felt like people don't use it anymore, at least not the way it used to be used. Now it, TV does it a lot. Uh, but not in cinema uh, and I mean I come from an experimental background so uh, I do watch a lot of experimental films like Jonas Mekas uh, and all that and maybe Chantal Ackerman she made a film uh, where she sent letters to her mom uh, mm -hmm. she's in New York so maybe films like that uh, but it's just like a general mm -hmm. thing you know uh, I just like these films so I guess mm -hmm. I'm gonna go towards them uh, or Johan van der Koeken and uh, mm. I, anyway, you know, there are a lot of references like that, but non specific for the film. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if and I may, sorry. Just a small observation. I, I found it, I had no idea you worked with Ben Rivers prior, who is an artist that I massively admire, and his work is just amazing, especially his newest things that I've seen. And what I found was the only similar thing, because I don't want to believe that these encounters that you had with your tutors were obligatory, huge influences that's not feed into this mythos and so. But um, what I found was uh, also like as you hinted, like this freedom of association, of associating these things. Of course, there is a narrative, linear narrative line that goes into your film that's offered by this backbone of the diary, but the visual associations, I think, have, have this specific kind of, of freedom of, of thought, of, of permitting themselves to explore all of these different spaces and not necessarily connecting them by a spatial logic or a very, at the same time, linear logic. It's, a, it's an emotional logic, I think, visually in your film, which I thought is very beautiful, that, that it's on top of the very well executed metaphors. I mean, especially the moment with the Acropolis crumbling, I thought, Wow, I mean, it was really, really realistically done, but it, it gave the sense of being realistic also due to the fact that it's a mini DV. I think it's, a, it's, it's shot on mini DV, that specific shot that then is edited into CGI. Over 16 with uh, CGI, with um, video effects. It's film. It, it's that's an observation that I wanted to make about the about your film. I really really enjoyed it, and it remind me reminded me sort of the anxiety of that period. You know, it was, it was right after Syriza was elected, right, but before the horrible night or the referendum. No? Yeah, exactly. So it was sort of the, okay. And how did this uh, specific political context? I mean, I, of course, the Acropolis crumbling is a very strong metaphor in your film, and I was curious to ask you about that. I mean, how did you relate to this? Were you more kind of an exarchia kind of punk approaching these these things, or how um, were, did you relate to the climate? I, I had just made a film uh, in 2011 that was much more about uh, exarchia 
and a rebellious kind of uh, atmosphere that we had here. I had uh, shot the riots anyway. But at the end, when I was finishing the film, it, uh, Greece was already in some kind of state where we realized uh, things are not going to get better, they're going to get worse and worse. So to me, it was something that was quite depressive. And that's why I think I was interested in hope. Because uh, I was always asking people, do you have hope? And then an, anarch an anarchist told me once, but uh, having hope is totally this stupid. Because then you expect, you wait for something. You should have no hope. So then you start uh, taking action. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the Acropolis was inspired by uh, a text by Victor Hugo, who is a French writer, uh, who said that uh, if the Caryatids, the Caryatids are these statues that hold uh, the temple, uh, one day rebel, and to him the Caryatids were uh, the people, then the whole temple will collapse, and it would take only one of them for uh, everything to change. So the idea came from that. Uh, and then, of course, we have the... Uh, you know, anyone who has ruins uh, in their country, it's uh, now really fascist uh, regimes that they say that we come from them. And it's a very heavy heritage to have. Uh, it's for tourists. It's, uh, uh, how do you say, you have to pay to see it in a very specific way. So a lot of uh, people say, uh, like, let's say, uh, for fun even, we should destroy it. So it was a way to, to, to start over you know, in a symbolic way, as an allegory. And about fascism, you mentioned at one point, uh, there is a mention in the diary of somebody getting killed by, by the Golden Dawn. And I wanted to ask if, if it's a reference to that very high profile case, now of the rapper, I think it was. No, 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 it was before. It was before. Uh, okay. They were killing um, Pakistani people in the street. I mean, it, it, you know, it started long before the singer. And then there was this, uh, rapper who was killed by them and they are still uh, judging them so we don't know what's going to happen mm. i'm i'm uh, shortening <laughs> my <laughs> so we can <laughs> but uh, thank you flavia it's i i think what i like about what you said is about the emotional links because now i'm writing a feature film and it's a hard uh, thing to have it funded and i am thinking about all this so it's useful thank you Thank you. <laughs> so, Francisco, Francisco, what about you, your project? It started from from the from a real story, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you, first, because if you you if you had said it, it's a fiction, I would have been uh, disappointed by my intuition. No, but I I feel super close. Um, what uh, George was saying, like we, this idea of go having some elements who make sense for you and try to identify them and try to spend a lot of time understanding which is your um, deep and personal relationship with those elements and why you are so at attracted by them. And then try to uh, let it go in the shooting. I try to believe in your crew, in your intuitions, in the intuitions of the crew, what they also, what they say about what we are doing. I mean, the sound engineer, the production team, like, and the people who appears in front of the camera also. Um, yeah, and I, I have the feeling that those, um, that is a form in itself more than documentary or fiction, like the gestures you, or what you try to mobilize in the, in the shooting, uh, makes the film at the end. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear, no. It's as clear as poetry, which have, is which is clear at some level. I have language problems. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, but, no. It's it is clear, but it's not you no know, narrative. I don't know. Okay, but mainly the the starting point was yeah something I saw in the newspaper. Like I saw those four guys who jumped from the from a a ship. 
to try to arrive to the coast and they die in trying to do that. And, and that also mixed it with a, um, a strong relationship I have with juridical archives. I spend a lot of time in, in general, like trying to search in, in archives and cases, juridical cases. Because uh, I remember once I was in front, I was, something happens to me and I was with a policeman, with a cop. And he was asking me about what happens. Like um, a, a group of burglars, they stole me. And he was asking, and I was trying to answer to the questions and he was like writing something totally different, like something completely different in the, in the report. And I told him, but you are changing like the, my storytelling. And he said, yeah, but you know, we need to find them. We need to help you, it's the best for you. We will say this and that and that and that. Um, just for intuition, I say to myself, okay, th there is a super rich uh, universe here. Like what is what they wrote, like what cops they write and judge and in the process and what the people who give that uh, them one that uh, how do you say them one how do you say morturia like um, um testimony testimony yes testimony uh, what uh, must be interesting to know what these people will what what they will say now like five years after this happened. Um, of course, memory is worst and um, I, I don't know, I, I have the feeling that many things could happen in between those levels, like what is road, what the official information, what people say and the territory where they live and how they live. And in this case in particular, like the guys dying uh, happens every year. So it was super, super alive. And people, everybody in that region have something to tell you about those ships and those guys. So all the levels of uh, storytelling were there from the newspaper to the juridical archives, from the memory of people, to the fiction, to the myth. And I think that um, the progression of the film, as you saw it, like when you see the film, is exactly the same progression of the research. What, like from the beginning, or at the beginning, we went to the place where one of the bodies were, was found. So we shoot in the water. And then we move to the, uh, this Samuel, this old guy, old man, who saw one of the bodies, who found one of the bodies. But also he found years before the body of his neighbor, dead also. So he, when I was talking to him, he was mixing the, the encounters of, with the dead. And when we were shooting with him, we realized that uh, his testimony was so confused that uh, we decided then to shoot this sequence with the kids reading a uh, 17th century um, sailors' uh, diaries, uh, diaries, no, like uh, yeah. travel diaries, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then the film starts moving. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 result and the proposal and the shooting were somehow like the same things. Think moving in the same, the same direction, in just one direction. But that was just believing in the people um, we, we were shooting with and we were living with. At some moment, we were living with the people who appears in the film. Yeah, you described very, very detailed, in detail, like everything you say, you said it's very describes very very in detail the film it's it was very nice uh, listening to you um because it, it it it's not that it was not clear in a way 
the structure, but it clarified it even more in a way when you dis when you described the way you you went from something that it's uh, a reality that happens very often. You said that it happens every year, but uh, uh, by the way it is depicted, it becomes like a kind a, a kind of um, uh, fairy not fairy tale, uh, but like fantasy. Uh, it's like a phantasm in a way. It's like they don't they seem not to have a, a, how do you say um, um, like materiality in a way it, it, it becomes like a, um, not necessarily like a dream but like something that you are not sure that it happened in a way from all these perspectives that are put together in the film that relativize in a way uh, what happened and the bodies and the, um, but probably for me, this also was constructed by the, um, uh, the shots with the, um, that are very much uh, foggy, uh, not foggy, um, with that, with, with, it's Pampas, how do you call it? Uh, those, those deserted places with, uh, it's Pampas, okay. So that I'm, I'm talking about that shots that have this, this quality about them that, that is like um, not clear, you know, it's something that it's not mystical necessarily, but uh, mystifying in a way um, mm. that, that functioned because it was, and you have these recurrent shots of, uh, of that beautiful sun um, over the water, uh, which is also like this translucid, I don't know if this word exists in uh, English. But like something that is, um, I don't know how to say. I I have a, I don't remember the word. Um, how Luca? How do you say Naluka? A mirage. Like a mirage in a way. I don't know something like this. Yeah. Uh, eh, something like this. Yeah, in that in that direction. Yeah, like mirage. Yeah. So yeah, it's very, this is very, you know, I, while you, you were all describing your films, this is very interesting because at some level, there are some common things. I don't know. For me, while I was listening to you, it became the way in, in the process in which you mix fiction and documentary. And this is something that I would ask uh, Francois because he selected the films. Uh, of course, I am really, really, and I'm not saying this just to, because you came, but I really, really enjoyed the films. They were very, very interesting to watch and yeah. But is this something that was, um, I don't know, uh, this mixture between fig the, the reality fiction, different registers, etc. cetera, well, it, it, it's not something that you see in all the films from left and right, something that, uh, it's because of the, the way you selected them, no? You understand what I mean? Yes, it was on purpose. And, it was uh, on purpose, yeah. Yes. And also because when you, you called me with Vanina and asked me for um, mm -hmm. program, um, you, you, you told me something like uh, uh, young filmmakers from nowadays. Uh, mm. And, and the, the, you, you mean by that, of course, uh, telling something about, it was the translation I made telling something about the world uh, we are living in. It was a bit strange because it, we are we are completely fine. We are still in the middle of this pandemic. And uh, and so probably I was influenced uh, uh, even uh, in my subconscious uh, by something that has to see with a, with, a, with sort of dystopy or, or reality that, uh, um, that, 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 that has to see with fiction in a way. Yes. Because what we are living now, it's like to be in a dysto dystopic film, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, it happens. Uh, th th there was a lot of commercial films about uh, pandemic and everything. And, uh, and so, of course, these films are, are very different, but also there, there was that. I, I didn't want to, to, to do something uh, thematic because I, I don't really like that in programming short film. And so there was something... Um, probably also organic and uh, something that has to see with the materiality. And uh, of course, we can say that about the, 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 the use of the, the, the 16 millimeters, but it works in a way also with the film uh, by Isabel. And um, even if it's, it's, it's shooting uh, uh, with a video camera. 
And um, yes, th th there was something, yes, that has to see with the dystopy, with the, with these kind of things. Where are we living now? Mm. Mm. In a in a reality that looks like fiction. Yes, probably. Or feel, feels like fiction in a way. Yeah. Like fiction used to be, like like Flores used to be a fiction, and now seems like a documentary. This is the explanation. It become it became a documentary in mm. two years. Yeah, probably. And there, there is something I would like to add also because uh, they are dealing with very. Um, strong and hard problematics, but uh, in the same time, there is something that, uh, how to say that, that you could link with a kind of tenderness. Mm. Uh, there is something delicate also uh, in the approach uh, of, of, uh, of the other. Uh, I say it very generally, but uh, mm -hmm. um, there is something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as a spectator also, I think we, we, we have a place also in these kind of films, with these kind of films. Yeah, it's a bit general, but uh, yeah. Yes, it was nice. So, after four hours and twenty minutes, this is the way we do it in Romania. But we learned it from France because uh, in Lusas, have you been to Lusas? So in Lusas, they make you stay for five hours without a break in the films and then to three hours discussions. And this becomes cathartic after four hours. So we have two hours and 33 minutes and we, we go, we, we, we'll achieve catharsis. So who wants to start? I want to ask a question. Um, I'm I, have, I have a question for Francisco. <laughs> in fact, um, so this is I the last question. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for everyone else. I didn't know that I'm. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, uh, I I found that your observations about your internal process and what you encountered on the field with regards to the truth of these facts and the recollections of. Uh, of, these, uh, of what happened on the island and also this unreliability of documents. I, I found it was very interesting in relationship to a very particular choice that you make. It's one that, in my opinion, you don't really find it that often in, in contemporary short films or contemporary cinema. It's rather the other way around. So it's almost a classical choice in that sense. You decide to abandon dialogue completely at the end of your film. And I, I thought that this was sort of, like an epitome of the fact that you cannot trust anything that is said in the, this by any of the characters in the film and that everybody is an unreliable nar narrator in this situation. So I wanted to ask you specifically about, about the final minutes of the film with those long, long traveling shots of the ship and so on. Um, was, is that a statement on the truth of image or how did you approach this this abandonment of dialogue especially because it's it's quite abundant in the beginning actually in a sense sorry what is abandon what oh. a lot of it <laughs> much uh, thanks for the question it's a super beautiful question i don't know if the answer could be that good <laughs> but yeah, um, that was an editing decision. When I when I was editing, I was convinced that I wanted to put in the image of the Pampa when when which is the first moment when we stop listening uh, voiceovers or people talking. I was convinced that I had to put uh, the voiceover of. Uh, the person who appears saying those these kids is lying uh, to continue the 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 myth, uh, not the myth, but the, the idea of somebody lost in the pampa, but was not necessary at all. Um, and I think that the one of the the proposals of the film is to call uh, back dead people and mainly using territory uh, and like try to 
to explode territory to call them back thinking that people still live like something stay in the places where they pass by um, and the, um, and also there was the wind which is already a super beautiful voice and during the whole film i have the i have the feeling that the the wind made his own own tell his own story during the whole film and is moving um the 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 wind in patagonia moves it's really wild and it's really strong like 100 kilometers and moves in all the directions and was a problem when we were shooting because the camera was falling constantly because of the wind but the pro the main problem is that the, the wind comes from every every direction and we try to do that also with the film like try to uh, navigate in and moving from one place to another um, this is a really technical thing but at the end the wind also the the mix like the sound engineer he tried to construct like um, uh, winds coming from everywhere like voices coming from every place and that was already enough for me once the um, the idea of this guy living in uh, this um, young work worker uh, sailor maybe living in some place in the pampa um, i don't i it was really natural we didn't need, need more human voices do you think images are maybe in this sense stronger than text maybe or, or textual information it's a, making abstraction of the fact that cinema could be seen as text of course you're not going that way mm -hmm. i don't know i probably I, I i don't have an answer i feel that they I mean, with the same medium, which is uh, sound and image, we can do so, so, so different things. So it's not about image being more strong than the words or language. It's more like the context and the construction and how you put the elements, how they, they interact together that could make image more stronger than, than voices or not, I don't know. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you. I don't know, do you, does anyone else want to say, to add something? Cheers or what? Cheers, okay. So thank you for be being with us. I would have stayed longer, to be honest, but I think some of you are look tired. <laughs> so uh, I don't know, it's very nice after a while, don't you feel it? I don't know, maybe you, you got bored, but after a while, don't you <laughs> feel it like uh, when you, if you didn't get bored, like, it becomes like your films in a way, you know, you connect at another level, not on a, not in a, in a argumentative level. And you, it, I don't know, the, 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 the mind functions, uh, I don't know, connects to other uh, non-usual uh, places. I don't know, it's, maybe it's just me, but it was very nice to, to listen to you and to, to meet you and to, to, I don't know, to watch your film. So thank you for being with us. I, ho I hope you didn't get uh, very bored or I don't know, annoyed by the, the discussion and the questions. Um, and I hope you will come back to other discussions with your other films. Uh, and uh, also just as uh, uh, to talk with us, to speak with us. Uh, uh, no, I, I was just, 
wanting to tell you that in two weeks we have somebody who is, um, uh, we invite uh, somebody who has a film in the festival, Irene Lustig, and then in, so in a month, we will have a long discussion with Clara Terton, uh, because somebody of you talked about uh, Chantal Ackerman. Uh, so, because there is a retrospective of Chantal Ackerman in the festival and Clara Terton was supposed to come. Anyway, we will have maybe online discussion with her at the end of August, but we have a first session with her on the 19th of uh, June, I think. And on the 3rd of July, it, we will talk with Ross McElwee and uh, Claire Simon. So, uh, please, please feel free to, to come back and talk with us. You know, <laughs> uh, last and uh, two weeks ago we were with uh, with uh, Dominique Cabrera. She told us that she will come tonight, so I'm going to phone her. Why okay. didn't she come tonight? She didn't study in Le Fenois, so she's a liar. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't say they will come back. They will come if they feel like at some point. Yes. And we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So thank but you. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much because all your films, I have nothing to, I, I, has, I said nothing because, because Andre is perfect. He's a teacher also, so he knows how to put things in world, in words. I'm not a teacher, uh, uh, but your films, it was really a, a big, big, big discovery also for, for me and all the people I have talked with, you know. So now we want just to discover more films of uh, Le Frenois. Yeah. It, you were a good uh, a door opener. <laughs> no, but I think Francois, don't get mad on me, but this is, these are really some of the best films from Le Frenois that I've seen. <laughs> I'm not saying that I, that I haven't seen other film, very good films from Le Frenois, but really you made a great selection. Thank you. But I can send you, I can send you other ones if you want. Yes, please, good. please. So you are a great school great artists come out of, yeah. of there for the four of you and yes we we are waiting to watch oh yes I want, and, and i wanted to say because you know sometimes uh, when you are making um when you are selecting films for festival um people uh, i mean i'm too because i'm a filmmaker too you know uh, i am we are wondering why they are not selecting my film you know and for instance uh, luna luna de, de hierro we loved it so much. It was proposed this year and we didn't select it. So um, it's not because we, we love so much a film that sometimes we, that we can necessarily select it because then it's a programmation. So it's really a proof that, um, uh, you know, when I say we loved your film and we couldn't fit in the, the festival, it's true because uh, uh, for instance, this film, I had seen it already for the selection, you know? So yeah, no, it's a, I'm just saying this to the, the filmmakers because it's true uh, that uh, sometimes we cannot pro program films that we love. But I hope we will have uh, other moments of meeting in the flesh. Yes. Yes. So we are waiting for you in Bucharest with yeah. your new films. Please. You know how it works. After you meet personally, you select all the films of that filmmaker. This yeah. is how it works now in festivals in general. So. Because we want to, 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 to talk together, to invite you to dinner and everything and drink together. So, so thank you very much. But thank you for the invitation, Vanina. Thank you. Thank you so May <laughs> One single thing, yes. the program on myself, just a final, final Please. note, because I also do programming and coincidentally lately I've been starting doing programming in the experimental film area and for a very long time I worked for a local festival that mostly showcased films made by completely independent filmmakers or, and most of them were, were still fresh, uh, still in school or freshly out of school, so a lot of, in my opinion, vulnerable film filmmakers. So, I mean, at least as a programmer, and I think also as a critic, I think considering what is happening right now, considering that a lot of student productions are halted, I understand that Le Frenois managed to make a 
to get sort of a special dispensary for the school to still continue to shoot uh, for the students to shoot their films. But I think that honestly, this is a very, very hard and difficult moment for young filmmakers that are still in school, especially for young filmmakers who are who are working on their graduation movies right now. And I think that when everything is going to be able to restart and so on, we have to find some, in my opinion, some resources for solidarity with obviously very vulnerable filmmakers. I mean, I'm just thinking of, of the fact of having your third, your graduation film now, which is usually many filmmakers use their graduation film to launch themselves into festival to graduate into the adult world. Well, you can finish your films and the festivals are gone. So it's, it's, it's going to be very difficult. I don't want to predict how this is going to go out, but I think solidarity is very necessary. And I think that the fact that we're here this, this evening and we're discussing films made by, by people in school or freshly, the first film freshly out of school, I think it's a f important first step for outlets like this because Personally, I don't know if I can, I can and want to trust the big festivals with short films. I don't think I can. I think the worst case scenario is going to happen. In fact, I'm breaking my promise of not making a prediction, but they're going to have next year, if everything goes well and the festival circuit will be resuscitated, they will have double the amount of films. That's going to be a catastrophe, in, in my opinion. It's going to be a catastrophe for the filmmakers, first and foremost. And yeah, this is just some thoughts about the current situation and I don't know, trying to spread out this message of being solidary to young filmmakers right now, because definitely it's not going to be Wes Anderson or Paul Verhoeven or all these people suffering because their film is not in Cannes. It's people such as the ones in this conversation, really. Yes. Shall we start this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very nice. It, it's, a, it's a very nice ending and uh, useful. Okay. Thank you, Flavia, for, the, for this. For to mask. It was Thank very everyone. nice. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.